You're listening to Welcome back to another episode of Books and Boba, a book club and podcast featuring books by Asian and Asian American authors. My name is Marvin Yue. And I'm Ri Rayu. And it's time for our April mid-month episode check-in. Uh, on this episode, we'll be going through the latest book news and publishing deals. Marvin, I heard that you have been reading a bunch of books, which I is have. weird because I have not been reading any. <laughs> well, I recently got myself a Kindle. Um, and so I have loaded it up with books that I have not gotten to read um, and also got myself a NetGalley subscription. Yay. Are you using <laughs> ours or are you? Do we have one? Yeah, we have one. Uh, I've mentioned it so many times. I made my own, but I included... Why did you make your own? I, I we we have a company one. Oh, well, you should give me that login. <laughs> no, no, I, I did. Check your email. It's probably in like your inbox. Like uh, It's been months since, probably. since I set it up. I... um. I work on a bunch of stuff. Stuff gets lost. Yeah. I apologize. I mean, that's how I got Descendants of the Crane by Joe mm. P, which just came out. And it's pretty good so far. Okay. I was going to buy that, but well, I'll probably still buy that. Yeah. You, you should buy that. <laughs> um, yeah. I just um, I just finished my arc of R.F. Kuang's sequel to The Poppy War, The Dragon Republic. And I think I messed up. What be- What happened? Well, because the book doesn't come out for four months. Which means the next book will come out for like a year and four months. Well, welcome to publishing. And I, it's like when you finish a season of really good television and you realize the next episode is not coming out for two years, like Game of Thrones. Yeah. Yeah. Well, speaking of television, I've been watching Killing Eve. I'm finally yeah. on the new season. And, uh, Did you know that it was also based on books? Yes, I, yes, I heard. <laughs> but I, I'm not going to read the books until... Um, I guess the show ends because Mm. I want to keep that suspense in me. (laughs) I don't know how how much it deviated from the books either, but it's always really fun to read the books uh, after you've watched something or or read it first. I I think I've heard it's pretty different. I mean, some the characters are the same, but like the the situations are a little different. The tones are a little different too. I think. Oh, so that's kind. That's my favorite kind of adaptation because (laughs) I. I get bored, so it has to be a little bit different. Yeah. How does it feel to watch uh, Sandra Oh do her thing? Oh, man, she's so good. <laughs> uh, I also like the actress who plays uh, Villanelle. Oh, Jodie she, Comer, yeah. Yeah, like, I I thought maybe she wasn't British. Like, I thought, like... She is British. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, because, like, she does accents so well. And my friend said that her French is near perfect. Oh. So I was like, oh, dang, like, like why is she so good at languages? That's that's a lot of like high level acting right there. <laughs> I think that happens when you grow up in Europe and you're surrounded by other languages, probably. Yeah, uh, maybe. And, like, I don't know, know. The traditional arts. Okay, but here's the thing, though. Like, I don't know how to do other accents in in America, and this is one country. That's true. If you ask me to do a southern accent, which like I'm from Georgia and I cannot do a southern accent. We well, should, you're we, from Atlanta, Georgia, which is more like yeah, me- metro. But, but but I've had teachers who had southern accents. Mm. I should be able to imitate them, but I can't. <laughs> I always get surprised when I meet Asians with like really thick uh, southern accents because mm. I'm like we're from the same region, but we can't <laughs> we we don't speak the same. <laughs> <laughs> it depends on where they're from. Well, I'm glad you're, you know, catching up on pop culture. Yes, um, I, I've taken a break from from reading. Right, I have varying interests. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't just read on an arm read in an armchair for like for like every day. Sure. You like, also play I, Kingdom Hearts. No, I have not been playing Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> I've been. Um, I don't think I've been playing any games recently. Um, Dan has just kind of monopolized oh. uh, the Switch. So, yeah, yeah. I'm waiting for um, the Fire Emblem to come out this summer. Oh, man. Yeah, Fire Emblem. <laughs> have every single uh, game from Fire Emblem. Really? Yes, I do. I kind of. Re- okay, anyways. Um, Sorry, this is a book podcast. Yeah. We're talking about other mediums. But like yeah. I said, I have, you know, a lot of interests. Yeah. If you would like to hear those interests, subscribe to our Patreon 
and we'll talk about other stuff for you. <laughs> Our fake. We should. We should find out. I mean, don't say it's fake. Maybe. Know. Maybe Let, we'll be, set it up. Let's let's be honest, listeners. If we set up something, would you pay for it? Would you? Would you? Please sign up on our on our Twitter. Let us know. Um, we'll we'll give you a T shirt or something. <laughs> uh, our April book club pick is Bangkok Wakes to Rain by Pichaya Sunbandan. I have not started yet. I have not started either. Yes, but you know what? That's the good thing about this podcast. It makes us responsible. That's true. And finish the we book have, before recording. It. We have two more weeks. But you you have to like give it time to breathe, you know, to That's like true. kind of go over things. But I am confident that I will finish in time and have <laughs> my notes in order. So don't worry, audience. Yeah. And as always, if you've already finished the book, please let us know your thoughts on our Goodreads forums. You can find and join our Goodreads group by going to goodreads.com and searching books and boba. Uh, but on that note, um, let's uh, let's get into our April 2019 mid-month book news. Before we start, though, I do want to make a note that Marvin was the one who compiled the news this time around. Yes, blame me. Oh, yay. Precious off Rira. I'm so proud of you. I just copied what you wrote on our Twitter, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> um, our first piece of news is in an exclusive submission, Vikings scooped up imposter syndrome by Aparna Nancherla, a comedian, writer, and co-star of Comedy Central's corporate uh, from CAA, the forthcoming collection of essays offers a mediation on her experiences with anxiety and depression using humor to illuminate her interior life. Aparna is a really hilarious actor. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm really out of touch with pop culture nowadays. Uh, <laughs> so what is Corporate? Cause corporate she- is a, uh, it's a Comedy Central sitcom, kind of like... Um, Imagine The Office if it took place in a way more corporate environment. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah, it sounds it sounds interesting. I am always down for people being more honest about anxiety and depression and uh, make, making it funny. Because if it's really, really depressing, then, then it's hard to read. That's true. Did you ever watch Crazy Ex-Girlfriend? No, I have not. Mm. I know. Put that on your two watch list. I know. Ugh, there's there's so many shows, Marvin. I, <laughs> I I only have so much time. Yeah, but they do this exact thing really well. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So next up in our news is Flix has bought author S.A. Patel's own voices debut YA novel, The Knockout. Uh, the book follows a 17 year old Muay Thai fa- fighter uh, named Karina Thakar. And her world is turned upside down when she learns she's landed an invitation to the U.S. Open, which could lead to a spot on the first ever Muay Thai Olympics team. But to make it to the Open, she has to come clean about being a Muay Thai fighter, a sport deemed too rough for girls, especially within the traditional Indian community. Publication is set for fall 2020. Wow. That's like... um. Man, I love sports books. The yeah. thing is, the, the thing is, I'm not like much of a sports person. Like, I've never done sports in high school, and I don't watch a lot of sports on TV. But you're a fan of, like, the human struggle of, like, (laughs) achieving greatness. I just just (laughs) love, like, stories about... uh, about like characters who struggle so much and train hard <laughs> and you know sometimes it's not enough and it's like yes yeah. give me that drama yeah it sounds like that combined with um been like beckham right where you have an, an indian girl who's really good at this one thing but she has to keep a secret from her parents man muay thai that's yeah. pretty badass yeah yeah i heard that the author is um She's also a Muay Thai fi- fighter, or okay. she used she used to do Muay Thai. So uh, I'm really interested in yeah. how it transitions to how her experience trans- translates on the page. So it's like multiple intersections of own voices. Yes, it's amazing. Uh, Scholastic Press has bought author illustrator Isabella Kung's debut picture book, No Fuzzball, in a two book deal. Uh, no Fuzzball is the story of a pampered and fluffy feeling despot who loves creating havoc and having her human subjects do her bidding. But when they leave the kingdom for the weekend, she questions whether she should be more of a benevolent ruler. The book is planned for 2020. I saw, um, like, I guess mock-ups. I I don't know if it's actually from the book, but I saw illustrations of the cat, and it looks super cute. (laughs) Um, I also heard that uh, Isabella Kung, um, she worked on, I guess, like, the script for this picture, picture book for a long time so really congratulations (laughs) yeah it sounds like uh 
it sounds like it's it's about time someone shined a light on the um the the authoritarian despotism of felines and cats because they are jerks. I love cats. <laughs> I'm guessing you're a dog person. I like cats. Okay. I like dogs more. It, I, for me, it depends on the dog. Mm, they're just so happy to see you all the time. Not all dogs. Some dogs look sad all the time. That's and I'm true. like, why do you look sad? You're supposed to be happy to see me. I need a cat that's like a dog. Just like. Oh, those are the best type of cats. <laughs> Anyway, uh, next up, we have Scholastic has bought in a four-book deal world rights to Layla and the Bots. Um, and it's a Branches Illustrated chapter book series written by Google product designer Vicky Fang. And uh, the book follows a rock star and her band of robots who solve problems in their town through deductive reasoning. Uh, Christine Nishiyama will illustrate, and the publication of the first book is set for 2020. I love that on our episode interviewing a middle grade writer we have all these kids books being greenlit it truly is 2020 it's going to be a good year i can feel it <laughs> <laughs> oh these past years oh i can feel it we're, we're like 2020 is going to make up for all the things i uh, went wrong i hope so i hope so, I hope so. Oh, <laughs> god uh philomel has acquired world rights to see the sings debut picture book birds of a feather about a white peacock who learns to love himself in the jungle full of color Stephanie Pfizer Coleman will illustrate publication is set for spring 2021. Roaring Brook has acquired debut author Van Huang's Girl, Giant, and the Monkey King. Uh, it's a contemporary middle grade fantasy about a Vietnamese American girl who struggles to fit in at school and to keep her secret super strength under control. So she makes a deal with the Monkey King, the trickster god, only to discover that magic can't cure everything. Publication is scheduled for fall 2020. Hasn't she ever read any Chinese fables? Never make a deal with the monkey god or any trickster god. It's like the monkey's paw. It's, it's the monkey's like... paw, monkey, <laughs> monkey king. <laughs> That's awesome, though. Um, Barat Babies has acquired world rights to author Rashmi Bismarck's debut own voices picture book, Finding Om. Or Om. It's Om, right? It's like a meditation thing. Om. Om. <laughs> Uh, weaving together wisdom from yoga and mindfulness, the book follows Anu, an Indian African girl, as she explores the mantra Om, 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 <laughs> with her Indian American grandfather. Morgan Huff will illustrate the book is slated for release in spring 2020. I like that we're teaching kids about culture and self care early on <laughs> i know like yeah. i feel like our generation is just like oh like keep keep it hustling keep going yeah, work keep really go hard keep going until you break down yeah and <laughs> <laughs> it'll make it easier for the next generation to overtake us you know yeah yeah um and finally um the movie collective uh, acquired rights to lady king's the impossible girl a story about the only female resurrectionist in 1850s who's also a legend among grave robbers as the girl born with two hearts uh, murders are unfolding around her as she struggles to keep her secret from turning her into the next victim. Uh, so congrats to Lydia uh, for getting her book option. And if we have forgotten anyone... Um, it's my fault, yes. Yeah, it's Marvin's fault. Please. And also, please uh, <laughs> tweet us and we'll try to include uh, those names in, in the next episode. Yeah, or just share, um, share with us on Twitter and just tag us so we can um, do a signal boost. And uh, uh, um, we have some... Award news. It's award season in the book world. Uh, the Hugo Award nominations were just announced. Uh, I want to say last week. Yeah, I, I, last week I think <laughs> within, recently. Within recently. the last, within the last month. <laughs> I guess we'll go through the categories and uh, we'll tell you guys which Asian and Asian American authors <laughs> made it to the uh, long list. Because we know that's what you all care about. I know, really. Um, <laughs> well, congratulations to all the nominees. I mean, it, it's a great accomplishment just but making. Especially the Asian and Asian American ones. Okay, Marvin, I'm not <laughs> trying to like make enemies here. Okay. I'm not making enemies. I'm just letting people know where my loyalties lie. <laughs> Uh, so for best novel, we have Yunha Lee's Revenant Gun. Um, and for best novelette, we have Zen Cho's If At First You Don't Succeed, Try Try Again. I made a declaration on Twitter that I will read her book in addition to uh, All the of Dragon the Republic things, and right? our monthly book. Uh, and I plan to keep to that. So we'll, we'll see. I'll, I'll let you all know my thoughts on The True Queen 
in the future episode. We we've been waiting for it for a very long time. So <laughs> we we are, well not really a very long time. It's only been like two and a half years since since the first book, so Sorcerer Royal, Sorcerer always, to Crown. It's always exciting to see new work from Zen. Uh, Yuna Lee also got nominated for Best Series, Machineries of Empire. So congratulations. Mm -hmm. Uh, For Best Graphic Novel, um, Marjorie Liu's and Sana Takeda's Monstrous Volume 3, Haven, uh, got nominated for Best Graphic Story. We also have uh, Paper Girls, Volume 4, written by Brian K. Vaughn, art by Cliff Chang, colors by Matt Wilson, letters by Jared k fletcher so congratulations to everyone who is involved with paper girls but especially cliff chang who did the art <laughs> have you caught up with monstrous yet no i have not mm, it's getting good it's well, getting good are you are you at the most recent volume i am at the most recent issue oh yeah and it's um uh, look at you reading more than me wow the tables have turned it's also comics and i can i go through that pretty pretty quick <laughs> Best Dramatic Presentation Short Form, which is, I guess, their category for episodics, uh, features Doctor Who's Demons of the Punjab, written by Vinay Patel, directed by Jamie Childs. Um, is this part of the new um, Female Doctor series? or uh, Yes. Cool. Yeah, it's been a while since I've watched uh, Doctor Who. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel bad because, <laughs> you know, I was... I mean, Marvin, you've been to my apartment before. You've seen all the Doctor Who. I have. Yeah, yeah. But like we said, we have many fandoms. We do, but I've I've just been like so out of touch. I need to get back into it at some point. (laughs) Uh, But for Best Fanzine, we have Rocket Stack Rank, um, and it's by editors Greg Hollander and Eric Wong. Congratulations. And for the John W. Campbell Award for Best New Writer, we have R.F. Kwong, Jeanette Ng and Vina G. Min Prasad. Yeah. Yeah. Congratulations. I think there were like five nominations for that category and three of them went to Asian Asian Americans. So yay. Moving on up. <laughs> the 2019 Indies Choice E.B. White Read Aloud Awards also announced their finalists. For Book of the Year Adult Fiction, we have Convenience Store Women, a novel by Sayaka Murata, translated by Ginny Tapley Takamori. Um, I have this book and... Um, I read the first chapter. It is very, very good. Really? Like, it's so good. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, when you I had that, to, me, I had to me, put it down because last month, like, I had to catch up on reading. But yeah. it's it's very good. I will let you borrow it after I'm done. Yes. It's very, very short. It's like this tiny, tiny book. I, I, I think it's like less than 200 pages. Cool. Yeah. Uh, for Book of the Year, adult nonfiction, we have All You Can Ever Know, a memoir by Nicole Chung. I've heard a lot about this book. Yes, I have heard a lot about it. Uh, I know our friend Lily Rugo interviewed her when the book was just coming out. Yeah. Yeah. uh, For those of you who don't know, Nicole Chung is um, pretty much a very prolific journalist. Mm -hmm. And uh, she is also a Korean American adoptee Mm -hmm. who is raised in a white family. So a lot of the memoir is about her search for her birth parents. Uh, birth parents and also uh, what it was like growing up as an adoptee and yeah. I think it's a really interesting um, really interesting memoir so that is something that uh, we should check out at yeah. some point it's been a while since you've read a memoir and it's good, uh, a good no, opportunity it, it has not been a while since we read a memoir we read uh, Jose Ant- Antonio Vargas's memoir not that long ago I mean I mean I guess it wasn't within like <laughs> like the past month but but it was fairly recent in terms of book club <laughs> picks. All right. Well, it's regardless, always a good opportunity to bring Lily back into the fold. It's always great to to catch up with her since she um, used to work with both of us. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for Book of the Year Young Adult, congratulations to Darius the Great is Not Okay by Adi Porum, which was also last month's book symbol book, book club pick. Um, once again, Rira keeps her streak alive of picking all the okay, award Okay, okay. The thing is, Adib Koram won a couple of awards before I picked <laughs> this book. So it wasn't like I, I picked it. I'm like, oh, look, like it got nominated for things. I, I am I am a soothsayer. Like, it, was, it wasn't like that. I'm just saying, if people know that books picked by us get nominated for awards, maybe we can get <laughs> more books to us. Um, and also, The Prince and the Dressmaker by Jen Wang. I've heard really, really good things about this book. Um, it is a book that gets recommended a lot, and um, I'm excited to read it at some point. My TBR list is very, very, 
very high. <laughs> like <laughs> it's like I had like I bought a new bookcase because I double double shel- shelf my books, and now like my bookshelf has kind of warped because of the weight. <laughs> so I had to go buy a new bookshelf, and now I have an excuse to buy more books because I can fit more of them awesome. in my apartment. <laughs> so I'm excited to read uh, Jen Wang's book. Yeah. Um, and finally, our last category, the E.B. White Read Aloud Award for Middle Reader. Congratulations to Front Desk by Kelly Yang and The Serpent Secret, Kiran Mala and the Kingdom Beyond by Saitani Dasgupta. Um, congratulations on their nominations. Front Desk is another book that I bought to give to my niece. Oh, look at you yeah. being... I'm starring them young. Yeah, you are. Showing them representation and different stories. I mean, it's great that you know your nieces have like those books because i know what do we have yeah claudia really kishi, what? Right. <laughs> <laughs> claudia kishi uh... yeah uh, congratulations to everyone who got nominated for these awards and we can't wait to see um who wins we know you, you know who i'm rooting for rira yeah. is more rira is more neutral yeah <laughs> i try to be at least uh, again, if there's any other book news that we may have missed uh, for this month, please let us know on our Goodreads forums or on Twitter. Um, I did my best. Uh, but- I, I'm I'm very impressed. <laughs> and that'll do it for the April book news and publishing deals. And stick around. Coming up soon in your feed will be our interview with author Henry Lien author of the Peace Sprout Chen series. Um, his second book is coming out soon. And his second book is already out. It's already out? Yeah. Wow. It, it came out in January. Oh, I, I, I missed that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we had a really good conversation with him, uh, learning about how he became an author, uh, how he created the world of Peace Sprout Chen, and also how he started writing songs for his books, too. <laughs> We'll be bringing you that interview on a separate episode, um, so please uh, keep a lookout on your Books and Boba feed if you subscribe to us. Don't forget to subscribe to us on uh, Spotify, Radio Public, Apple, Google, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Um, if you enjoy Books and Boba, please share um, our episodes and our posts on Twitter and social media. It really does help us uh, reach new audiences. Uh, we've been seeing a lot of people mention us in like book threads, which is pretty interesting. Yeah. Yay! We got noticed yeah. by our senpais. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, that'll do it for this episode. Uh, thanks again to Visual Communications for letting us record this podcast at the Potluck Podcast Studios located in downtown LA. Um, Visual Communications is a great nonprofit organization, um, and they're the ones behind the upcoming Los Angeles Asian Pacific Film Festival happening from May 2nd to May 10th in Los Angeles. Um, if you're interested in watching some great Asian American stories, on the screen um, in addition to reading it with us uh, please stop by there's a lot of great films happening there you can learn more about that by going to the website vcmedia.org thanks also to the potluck podcast collective um, it's a collective of asian american hosted podcasts that we're a part of featuring amazing shows such as um, the club cast they call spruce good muslim bad muslim asian americana and more you can learn more about the other great shows that we collected by going to the website podcastpotluck.com And yeah, watch out for the next episode with Henry Lian. um, And we'll see you then. Thanks for listening. Hey, I'm Phil Yu, and you may know me from a blog called Angry Asian Man. And I'm Jeff Yang, author, journalist, and celebrity dad. We host a podcast called They Call Us Bruce, an unfiltered conversation about what's happening in Asian America. Each week or so, we host a discussion about some of the most vital and interesting topics in our pop culture and our community, bringing in guests who are shaping and informing this thing called Asian America from Hollywood to D.C. and beyond. Uh, We've got media, entertainment, food, family, politics, representation, the good, the bad, the WTF of it all. So check us out wherever you get your podcasts or at theycallspruce.com. Peace. Peace.